Hey guys, Space Marine 658 here. Today we're going to be kind of covering optimization again, um, specifically when targeting UI. Um, so I'm going to walk you through a pretty cool, handy little trick. Um, somebody kind of pointed me in this direction. I had heard of it, but not a whole lot on it. Um, but actually, Epic recently did a decent little talk on it. I'm going to link that in the description down below. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to be covering today. So. Um, when it comes to UI, there are a few things you've got to concern yourself with. And one of the things that's sort of a sneaky killer for a lot of people is, um, for example, here, you know, this is a very simple widget, uh, just has a handful of things, right? You know, a size box and overlay, and then within that, you got an image and then another size box and another image. Um, and it looks like it should be relatively simple and even without anything, you know, running any kind of progress bar updates, um, you'd think it would be pretty easy to run. Um, but in fact, you know, this uses quite a bit of performance. Um, now that's relatively, you know, everything in, in, in optimization is sort of relative. Um, you got to kind of think about things less of a hard coded, like, oh, it's going to take exactly, you know, 2.5 milliseconds, which you could run a bunch of tests and find that kind of information out. But because there's so many different layers to these things, there's not necessarily a strict and hard, fast rule. Um, but let's kind of take a look at, you know, what this looked like before my optimization. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to make sure I pull up the right one here. Yep. Um, so this is the um, insights that I ran before, and I just kind of zoomed in. Um, and took a look and inside of here, you know, we have um, a lot of different things going on, some updates and things like that. But the, the big thing we wanna look at here um, is a couple of numbers. So our game UI paint, uh, and then specifically since this is the widget we're looking at, we're looking at the uh, missile tube status and there's going to be two of these. So there's going to be this one uh, and then there's going to be one more, um, let me pull up the game UI paint. So uh, yeah, this is a little bit of an easier way to see it. But as you can see here, we have um, the two, there is the transitory and the non-transitory. Basically it's 1.4 and 1.3 milliseconds for a total game UI paint of 1.6. And our inclusive is um, 178.5. What inclusive means is basically including all of the children under here and it's counting them up as a additive rather than exclusive is more of like what you'd actually see in a frame um, because you know for example you know when you're adding in the children you're not looking at them as, in terms of how they're affecting the upper performance you're just purely saying here's how much performance um, in, in you know how much it would um, take if they were hard-coded so that way not they none of them actually shared any of that it was all um, done together and that'd be 178 versus the exclusive is 16.7 uh, just for reference here, you know, 16.7 is roughly 60 frames per second. Um, so you can get that lower, you can run it higher frames than that. If you get that um, a higher number, you run it lower frame than that. Um, as you can see here, the spike is when we actually load the level. Um, so before this is all in editor, um, once the PIE loads and garbage collection and all that's done, that's when this kicks in. Um, but yeah, so as you can see here, you know, we've got these numbers down, right? And that is when we have this setup right here now something you may notice you know is is some of these probably could be wrapped in within the other items just because uh, there's a quite a lot going on here even for such a simple thing you know you probably could trim this down uh, and that alone would help because each of these basically take draw calls um, now the way you can think about it is um, some of these can take multiple, for example, overlays when they have items underneath them, especially if the items have been moved with transform. You may be looking at, um, you know, two or three draw calls each. And in the grand scheme of things, that's not super expensive, but it's all CPU um, side. And so what essentially happens is you end up getting, you know, when you, especially if you have multiple of these layered on like a map and things like that, you end up getting um, a lot of CPU bottlenecking. Um, from all the different widgets being stored and sort of tracked. Um, and so what we're going to want to do um, is try and sort of, you know, combine some of these and trim these down um, and see what we can do to really make this more limited. So let's take a look at um, what we're going to want to look at here is our progress bar. So as you can see here, this is the sort of the complete version, right? The fixed version. 
and all this is um, is a single size box wrapped around an image. Um, now, in theory, I don't necessarily have to have the size box if I do some uh, math inside of the container widget for this, but for my own sanity, um, no matter where I show this widget, no matter what style I have this set up, I always want it to be 64 by 64. Um, and so because of that, you know, I'm hard coding that sort of in here. And, you know, by removing that, I could save a little bit more performance, uh, but this is a trade-off I'm willing to make uh, just for my own speed and performance uh, in terms of just getting it created faster. So let's actually take a look at, you know, how did I, how was I able to trim that down? Cause you remember I had all the rocket as like a separate widget and things like that. And I had an overlay, uh, but now it's all combined within this one material. And that is because I basically made a progress bar master material. Now this here, this is um, an instance of that. And I've got some options here, but I can always expose more options if I choose to at a later time. Um, but essentially what I did was I took my default progress bar, uh, which was just a, a very simple progress bar that basically had, uh, aside from this ad, so ignore this ad, but without this ad, this is basically the entirety of my progress bar, right? So I plug this in here, you'll see it's just a circle. Uh, but by what I've done here is I've added this texture sample, which let's say we convert this to a parameter and we'll call it um, center image. What I've gone ahead and done um, is I've made it so that I can reuse this in other places, but also I don't have to include this in any widgets that I create with this. Um, so what I'm looking at here is, you know, sort of removing this from the CPU side by having it in the widget and moving it over to the GPU side where one, we can have more parallelization, uh, but two, uh, it's sort of, takes that workload off of the CPU because uh, on average, most people have a little bit stronger GPU than the CPU and games tend to run less on GPU, which sounds kind of counterintuitive, right? You think, you know, oh, well, you know, games, they run very heavily on GPU, uh, but especially, you know, if the setup isn't quite right, especially with UI, uh, they tend to run more on the CPU. And that's the goal is to create snappier uh, UI and to do so, you really need to move a lot of that over to the GPU or there's more parallelization. Uh, there's just a lot more tools for it to be optimized. Uh, so what I've done is I've set up this image and I've got a texture coordinate that's adding an offset. Now I did this specifically like this because I could have calculated, you know, based on uh, the U tiling, which you can still do. So based on the U tiling, you can kind of take this um, and I think it's somewhere around the park of basically whatever you add or subtract from this U tiling, which is your scale for the image. Um, you basically want to take half of that and then either subtract or add based on if you're going up or going down in terms of the size. Um, so for example, this is a 1.5 um, tiling size. Um, and so I'm taking half of that, which is, you know, taking half of the 0.5. So it's 0.25. And then I'm subtracting since I'm going up in scale. Now, if I were to go down the scale, say down to 0.5, I'd probably want to add, uh, but it just depends on, you know, what, what you're doing there. And so by moving all of this into my shader for my UI, um, I've, I've sort of cut down on the amount of CPU usage needed, uh, but I've also kind of made this more flexible for myself. Uh, if I ever need to reuse this status symbol or, or use this elsewhere, or if I ever want to um, change that image, let's say I've got multiple missile types, right, which is definitely something that my game will have, I can change this image for each different missile. So I have an inst here, right? And so that because these are dynamic material, because the progress bars are all separate from each other, like, you know, one missile's loading and the other isn't, I'm updating only the one that's loading. Um, I can actually change the image based on the actual missile that is loaded in the tube. And so that alone, you know, gameplay wise has definitely changed a lot of things because it makes everything a lot simpler for myself. Um, but then let's actually take a look at the performance, right? So if we open up this one, this is our, um, after I've made those changes, this is just changing a single widget um, that is repeated a few times in a single UI element, right? Um, so we go ahead and take a look. It's 176 instead of the 178, I think it's like 178.5. Um, yeah, 178.5. So we cut out about two and a half inclusive um, milliseconds and 0.1 uh, 
uh, exclusive milliseconds. Um, and then if we take a look at our game UI paint, you know, this is at 0.15 instead of 0.16 or 1.6. Um, this is at 1.1 1 .1, uh, instead of before it was 1. I uh, believe well, it was 1.4 and um, let me open up this one. So yeah, so here we got 1.4 and 1.3. Over here, instead, we have 1.3 and 1.1. So as you can see, it's not a lot of performance for a single widget, um, but you gotta remember that that adds up and that alone is frames, right? So if we're, if we're looking at it, you know, if we're looking at the, the savings here, you know, say half a millisecond, um, half a millisecond could be the difference between making it um, into that 16.7 frame budget it depends on of course your frame budget what you're shooting for uh, and this is just one single widget now if you start applying this to more widgets especially larger widgets that maybe have deeper hierarchies by making the material sort of the driver of the ui instead of uh, an afterthought um, you can save yourself a lot of performance you know this is this is kind of almost um, a simple example uh, but if you can apply this, if you can learn a little bit about using materials instead of UI um, or well, inside of your UI as a, a way to drive your UI, um, you can save yourself a lot of performance over time. Uh, but yeah, so that is it for today. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely leave them down below. This is a kind of complicated topic. So definitely understand that you're not going to necessarily know how to change everything over to this um, from the get-go, but it's just something to be aware of and find ways to incorporate it. The easiest thing that I found is for icons, because uh, normally icons, you know, maybe you have like three or four layers. Instead, you can make it all within one single material uh, and then place it in an image and you can handle everything that way. Uh, that's a very simple way to use it and it, it that alone will help you a lot with uh, making snappier UI. Uh, but yeah, that's it for today. Good luck and good hunting.